Welcome back everyone, I'm Ed Ballou and I've got some more tips and tricks on the Helium Network. I was crawling around in my attic and I found this little guy. And I'm going to set him free right now because he hitched a ride. Anyways, hey look, this is a Nearsen 9dBi antenna. So from my last video up on the roof, I was using a Rack 8 dBi and I wanted to switch it out as soon as the weather got nice. So I, I've been testing this out. Now, right away, I noticed that my earnings dropped. And I'd say dropped about in maybe even half. Now the network is growing, so there's some plausible amount of information in there that, um, that, that that's what could be affecting earnings. But beside from, from that, I figured, well, what else? What else could be? And I looked at the locations of the, where those witnesses dropped off. And one was to my north, and the other one was to my southwest. So I got to thinking, hmm, I wonder what my alignment is. So this Nearsen, when the cone it sends out is a lot more narrow than the 8 dBi. Of course, the higher you go in dBi, the more, the more tighter that signal is. And so if your antenna is out of alignment, meaning if it's not perfectly straight up and down in every direction, north, south, east, and west, you're, you're potentially losing witnesses. So I've got some tips, and I did this right away at the beginning when I, when I mounted the original antenna, but I never went back and checked it after I did it. And even so, I noticed something when I come back. See, this is why it's good to go back over your setup and second guess yourself, look over everything and see what you're at, what, where, what's going on, and where your failure points are. Now, let's review or go over one of my failure points. So we're gonna look down here. Let me make sure I've got you going low enough here. So we're gonna follow this down. And now we're looking at the anchor to my mast. So I got my guy wire coming from this way, coming into this eyelet right here. And this is going into my, into my roof. Now, I was using a previous eyelet that I might still have on me, yes. So this is my previous eyelet. And you can see that I've got just a, it's a nice wood, wood screw in it. Had I gone right into a stud, that might have been uh, enough. However, I didn't. So I swapped it out for a different eyelet. Now, this is a galvanized eyelet. And I think that this would be weather safe for probably quite a while. But anyways, here's what I did. So I took this 3 8 inch eyelet and sunk it in. And when I did that, came out the other side. And I got a bit of a longer one to go on the other side because I wanted, when I had the eyelet, I wanted to be able to take a piece of uh, two by four, which is what I had previously, this was screwed into to give it a little bit more reinforcement, but it just wasn't giving it enough. Because what I had noticed was this eyelet had leaned in towards the mast. All this stress of pulling on there made the eyelet turn. And had I not come back and caulked this, I could have gotten some water in my attic. So this is something to be aware of as you're, as you're thinking through your setup. So I had the eyelet, and then now you can see there's a, um, a nut and then a washer and then on the other side of that is the two by four right up against the roof of the house and then another washer and a nut and i got that all tightened now i didn't want to tighten it down too tight because in the hot of the summer the strain of this bolt could make this washer go right through my shingles and compromise the shingles so it's it's about hand tight a little bit more and that's that's it i didn't want to overdo it and of course i i cocked a bunch of it in there uh, of, of some roof sealant so this is just some roofing um, flashing caulk to put on there just to seal it up a little bit more so now i've got a lot more weather safe so this is protecting the home way better way more, more important than my helium earnings so once i did that then i was able to look back at my antenna and still i noticed that it was out of alignment so now we're going to go and look at that antenna and see what's going on. So you can see here that I've got, make sure I got in view, right here I've got a, a level. And this is a magnetic mount level. 
and you can't see the other one but it is right in front of it maybe you can um, but it is right here so I have two levels side by side and one's to the north doing the north south direction and then the other one is doing the east west so the one that you see prominently is the east west direction so we're gonna we're gonna actually I'm gonna move the camera and look in here so that we can see all of those all of the data all the leveling information here I'm gonna zoom in on here and you can see that that is just about as level as can be and it's not really a surprise since I first did this the chimney is not really gonna move that much the, the mast isn't gonna sway that much so from east to west this thing is looking actually pretty good so now let's go over and look at the north-south so you can see that it's actually now I can make that move if I'm if I zoom out here and I'm just pulling on this wire so I'm pulling it to the north and it's making that bubble go a little bit more in line so what we're going to do is I'm going to tighten up my my little uh, or whatever adjuster right there I don't know what the official name for it is but we're gonna we're gonna tighten that up and again how you do that and I just have one up here that we can zoom in on but I would tighten this one way or the other one way tightens it one way loosens it so that it gives more slack or takes up slack and then you can control the direction of your mast from north south east west by doing this nice little easy trick I'm not going to show you the adjustment, but rest assured, once we get once we get done with this, this is going to be perfectly level. So what this means, though, is because the antenna is basically leaning to the south, so I could be losing witnesses towards my north. And actually, if they're uh, the ones to the southwest, it's interesting that I'm, I'm missing them too. But those are really close, so I could be overshooting those. So there's more research to be done. And honestly, this just may not be the right antenna for this setup and the witnesses that I have around here. So I'm gonna make these adjustments and move it back a little bit to the north. Hopefully we can pick up those witnesses. And, and this happens pretty quick. I mean, the beacons go you know, kind of 24 seven, you know, so picking, picking them up, uh, hopefully could be a relatively soon operation. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make those adjustments and then watch. And then if it doesn't probably pick up by tomorrow or maybe a couple days at most, then I might switch back to the 8 dBi. And of course, I will be sharing all this information with you. Again, we've got some amazing, amazing results in the, the price of HNT. I just had somebody chat me up today and they said, hey, wanted to see if we could somehow get one of these miners set up such that we could start working with a beehive. Us and our neighbors have a beehive that we want to get some pull some data off of do you think that your your solution would work for that I said I think so let me do some research and lo and behold there's somebody doing some LoRaWAN technology for beehive uh, monitoring so that's really cool so there's more applications and then I was driving my kids back uh, to the hardware store and I was thinking about geez it's getting hot out and I thought about children in cars is a very especially as the temperatures go up, it can be very unsafe for them. What if they get in there? I got little kids, so what if they got in there and I didn't know about it? And so I, uh, I thought, well, what would happen if we had a little sensor that could detect, obviously, the temperature in the car, but then also alert on maybe a crying baby or something like that, or a child that's, that's kind of screaming or something. That'd be some easy tech that we could just whip together and put out in these cars. And it would, it could literally, like with the speed of what, what we could do, we could theoretically actually save a child before summer's out. And so that's the urgency of some of these things, some of these applications. Yeah, there's some, there's some fluff in here and yeah, crypto mining's great, but think of the applications that we can, that we can do. Oh my gosh, there's so many things that, you know, lives that could be saved, of course, important data, crop data, all that kind of stuff, environmental monitoring, all that's great. But when we can save lives, that whoa, that changes the whole game. So that's an idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think that through, and maybe somebody's already got a solution out there for it. If you do, drop it in the comments. If you like what I'm doing, sharing this information, drop a like, drop, drop a subscribe, 
share it with your friends. I appreciate it. Appreciate you checking in on me, giving the, giving the comments and good or bad. I'm continuing to science up my setup, both on the, the YouTube side and of course the mining side. And we'll share all those details with you. Thanks for watching. Peace.